Hi there, and welcome to Learn to Code with Ruby. My name is Boris Paskiver, and I'm a data analyst based in New York City, and I'm excited to help you learn how to code using the Ruby programming language. So let's get started. So what is Ruby? Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. Now, if you've never heard the expression object-oriented before, that's totally fine. Hopefully you've heard of a programming language, certainly from perhaps the media or your coworkers. And all that a programming language is, is a way that we communicate with the computer by giving it instructions or commands to execute. Ruby is one of the top 10 most popular programming languages worldwide. Of course, it depends on what metric or study you use, but it is popular. It's still very much in use today. And what's even more interesting is in a recent survey of college students, Ruby was found to be the most popular first language for programmers to learn. So although its popularity in the general workforce fluctuates, it may fall from one year, it may rise in the next year, Ruby is super popular among people getting started with programming. And the reason for that is that it's super simple and super easy to learn compared to other programming languages. It's a great starting point. Ruby was released in 1995 by a developer named Yukuhiro Matsumoto, a Japanese developer who goes by the nickname Mats. And its development continues today, more than two decades later, by an open source development team worldwide. Ruby is available for both Windows and Mac OS operating systems, and in this course, I'll take you through the process of setting it up on either system. That process is a little bit different depending on what you're working with, but once we finish up with the installation, the language itself remains the same. So why Ruby specifically? Well, as I mentioned, Ruby is known for its simplicity. It's super easy relative to other programming languages. In fact, if you go to the official Ruby website, which is ruby-lang.org, you'll find this slogan or this logo right on the top of the page. Ruby is called by its developers as a programmer's best friend. It is designed to make programming easy and simple uh, without forcing the programmer to learn a ton at the beginning. It allows them to just dive right into it and learn a lot less before they're able to develop full-scale programs. So let's run a fun experiment. Let's dive immediately into Ruby in this lesson. What I'm going to do is present you a single line of valid Ruby code, even though perhaps you've never coded before or never coded before in Ruby. And what I want you to do is to pause the video and read the code out loud a couple times and see if you can guess what this line of code does. If you've never programmed before, this should be a very fun experiment for you to do. So here's the code. Now, before you pause the video, one other thing. Uh, please ignore for now the symbols. You can ignore things like the dot. You can ignore things like the curly braces before the print word and at the very end. You can ignore the double quotes. Just literally read the words as a human being would, not a computer, and see if you can guess what this does. All right, now let's take a look at what this actually outputs. This is valid Ruby code. The result of this Ruby code is going to be this. It's going to be the text hello there printed five times to the screen. So if we take a look at this code and just read it left to right five times, print hello there. It makes sense, hopefully, and the big picture at least does. Now as far as the symbols and the actual code itself, I know it's uh, weird to wrap your head around it, but if you can sort of guess uh, what this does before you even start coding, you can sort of start to get a sense of how simple Ruby is. Many times it reads just like English, or perhaps broken English, if you will. Many times when you're going to be coding in Ruby, you're going to be surprised because it's going to feel just like a, a English command. Okay, perhaps a little bit broken, perhaps the verbs are going to be out of place, but you can see this basically reads just like how we describe it to another human being. We want them to print a bunch of text and we want them to do it five times. In this case, we just say five times first, five times print hello there, and the result is output there below for you. Now let's talk a little bit about Ruby's design principles. And if you don't understand all of the concepts in this slide, that's totally cool. This is just a big picture overview of Ruby. Ruby is what's called a high-level programming language. That's in comparison to low-level programming languages, which are closer to machine code. Uh, underneath our computer is basically all ones and zeros. Perhaps you know that, perhaps not. But Ruby is a high-level language, which means it's designed to be more readable by humans. And it takes care of the work of taking our human readable code and then converting it to the lower level, uh, the machine code, as, as it's called, that the computer can process. 
Ruby is also an interpreted language. The contrast or the comparison to that is a compiled language, and examples of compiled languages include Java and C++. What this means is that Ruby's code is executed at runtime, so whenever you run a file, that's when the Ruby interpreter, as we call it, runs through the file and executes your commands. It doesn't need to be compiled before it is run. In a language like Java, the code you write has to be compiled. That's sort of like a, a step that you have to execute before it runs. And when the code compiles, the compiler checks for things like errors and alerts the programmer, and it prohibits the file from running uh, if the programmer has made some kind of mistakes. In Ruby, uh, it, it doesn't need to compile. It does that at runtime. So uh, that means that the code can run um, instantaneously. What that also means is if you have something like a mistake in your file, let's say you have 100 lines of code and you make a mistake in line 30. The Ruby uh, way of doing things is it's going to start uh, reading your file and it's going to proceed without a problem until it reaches line 30. At that point, it's going to run into the error and the file is going to crash. That's in comparison to a compiled language where the compiler will, will prohibit the file from compiling if there's a mistake or an error anywhere in the file and you can't even run it before it's, uh, before it's properly compiled. So Ruby is a lot more flexible. That's really the key takeaway here. The advantage of an interpreted language, as I mentioned, is flexibility, it's easiness, it requires a lot less code to get started. Uh, the disadvantages, as I mentioned, is that it's uh, more prone to error, and also compiled languages tend to be a little bit faster. Ruby is not renowned for its amazing speed, it's renowned for its simplicity and its naturalness when it comes to uh, typing it out and, and getting started with it. So as I mentioned, Ruby code is read top to bottom, line by line, much how you'd read a book or much how you'd read a web page. An interpreter simply moves through the file that you've written and just runs through the code line by line. And as I mentioned, the program that runs the Ruby code itself is called the interpreter. That's what we're actually going to be installing in this course. I want to offer a quick side note on Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails is a popular web development framework that's built on top of the Ruby programming language. So just to reiterate, Ruby is not the same thing as Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails is an extension. It's an add-on. It's an extra thing that's built on top of uh, Ruby. And when I say web development framework, what I mean by that is Ruby on Rails is done is used by uh, web developers. So for example, when you go to a website and you enter something like a username and a password, the logic of the web page that takes that information and authenticates it, compares it to a server, uh, and says, is this, are these credentials valid? If so, let the user in. If not, do not let them in. And then perhaps give you things like your user account information. That kind of logic behind a web page is what Ruby on Rails is responsible for. Ruby on Rails is probably the largest reason for the growth uh, in popularity of Ruby over the last 10 years, but the two are totally different things. With that said, learning the core foundation, the core programming language that powers Ruby on Rails, or Rails as it's, as it's called, is certainly advantageous. Before you start diving into the add-on or the extension, it helps to know the basic programming language. So even though this course does not cover Ruby on Rails, it does cover what you need to become a Ruby on Rails developer if that's something that interests you. So as I mentioned, we'll be diving into object-oriented programming within this course. Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. And for now, there's really only one key takeaway that I want you to take away from this lesson. It's just six words. Everything in Ruby is an object. Repeat that to yourself, write it down, commit it to memory. It will help you along the way. Everything in Ruby is an object. Well, what is an object? Well, I'd like to begin with an, an exercise to sort of get our brain juices flowing and start thinking about real life objects. For example, if you were to look around, a real life object would be something like your computer, your monitor, a pencil, a pen, a desk, a bed, and so on. So here's the exercise, real life objects. I want you to do this. I want you to pick three objects around you. You can observe the real life objects that are currently surrounding you and just pick three of them. For each of those objects, I want you to create two lists, each with five values. And I recommend writing this down. It'll make the process a little bit more effective. So two lists for each object. The very first list should be of attributes. And attributes are simply details about the object, characteristics about it, facts about it. The way that I'd like you to think of attributes is as key value pairs. What that means is I want you to first define the characteristic and then I want you to define the value. 
For example, if I'm looking at my computer right now, the attribute or the description or the characteristic might be something like color. And the value for that attribute would be silver. Silver is the value for my color attribute, okay? So that's the first thing, and in the next slide, I'll show you a more in-depth example so you have a better sense of what this uh, exercise or assignment is. The second list that I want you to make for each object should be of what we call methods. And a method is simply a functionality. It's a thing that the object can do. Now, to keep things simple, if you can't come up with five legitimate methods, you can always come up with something fake. For example, if I was looking to uh, talk about some methods about a pencil, I can come up with a method like write, or a method like erase, or even a fake method like throw uh, across the room. So a method is usually something that's going to begin with a verb. It's an action. It's something that the object can do or something that you can do with the object itself. So let's take a look at one full example. I've done this for my computer that I'm recording these lessons on. You can see my two lists, one on the left, one on the right. On the left here, I have attributes, and you can see five of them. And the actual characteristic here is in bold, and then the value for that characteristic is written uh, to the right of the colon. So for my computer, I have a type. It's a MacBook Pro. My computer has a maker. That maker is Apple. My computer has a year of production, and that's 2015. My computer has a color, and the value for that attribute is silver. And my computer also has a keyboard color, and that is black. Notice that these are not actions. These are not things that the computer does. Rather, these are descriptive characteristics or details about the object. That's what I mean when I say attributes. Conversely, on the right, I have methods, which are things that the computer can do. You'll notice that all of these things start with verbs. So what can a computer do? It can be turned on. It can shut down. It can launch an application, it can close an application, and it can create a file. And these are just five totally random ones. There are no right or wrong answers. Uh, the most important thing here when you pick your three objects is uh, splitting up these two lists and understanding what falls on one list and what falls on the other list. An attribute is a detail or a characteristic. A method is a functionality or an action that you can take with the object. So go ahead and complete this exercise on your own time. Other than that, I'm really excited to get started. I'm really excited to teach you how to code with Ruby. I hope you enjoy this course. Feel free, of course, to leave a review. Feel free to leave a comment or a question. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But I hope you're just as excited to get into coding and learning to code with Ruby. And I'll see you in the next set of lessons where we'll dive into setting up Ruby on a Mac. If you're watching this on a Windows machine, by the way, the set of lessons for setting up Ruby on a Windows computer immediately follow the next batch. So feel free to skip that and just move on to the first lesson in this course that begins with Windows. And then we're basically going to sync up. I'll show you the process, the installation process for both computers. And after that, all the lessons will be the exact same. All right, so I'll see you in the next lesson.